Welcome back to Exercise Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the functions of an amino acid that's not normally found in proteins called norvaline, which is actually an isomer of valine. And in some cases, we may call it a BCAA analog, although you should notice from the chemical structure over here, its R group is not branched. Um, it just happens to be a constitutional isomer of valine. And it turns out that norvaline can be taken as a supplement. You can actually find this in some drugstores as a supplement you can actually take uh, before the onset of exercise. And so we'll talk about why that is. But first, let's actually discuss its catabolic pathway. So norvaline is an amino acid, and the catabolism is going to be very similar to what we saw for the catabolism of the BCAAs. So norvaline is going to be imported, first of all, into the skeletal muscle itself. Here's the cytoplasm or cytosol in here. Now in terms of the catabolism, norvaline is going to react with a transaminase. So this amino group right here is going to get transaminated to form a carbonyl. Now, this, is, this pathway is not completely worked out yet. Um, whether or not it's the branch chain amino acid transaminase or a general transaminase is not known. But it is known that this amino acid will be transaminated to make the corresponding alpha keto acid called 2-ketopentanoate, which is this molecule right here. And as we saw in normal BCA metabolism, this alpha keto acid will then be transported into the mitochondrial matrix down here. Now, again, for simplicity, I haven't drawn both of the mitochondrial membranes just for the sake of space, but just understand that it has to cross both the outer and inner mitochondrial membranes. And then 2-ketopentanoate will end up in the mitochondrial matrix. This is where it will react with either just the general alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex, or it's possible it could be the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex, even though this is not technically a branch chain. And remember what that enzyme or these enzymes will do is they'll actually take the carboxyl group, decarboxylate it as CO2, and then ultimately link this carbonyl carbon to a coenzyme A. And that's actually what we see right here. This would be the product of the alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex. It would convert 2-ketopentanoate to butyryl S-CoA. So all this business over here starting at the S and to the right, this is all the coenzyme A. But it just links that to this 4-carbon fragment, which the whole thing is butyryl S-CoA. Now butyryl S-CoA, you look at this, this looks just like a very small fatty acyl-CoA. So this molecule, butyryl S-CoA, can then just undergo simple beta oxidation. And after one round of beta oxidation, we would actually produce two molecules of acetyl-CoA because this is a 4-carbon acyl group, simple acyl group. So 4 carbons, one round of beta oxidation, we should have two acetyl-CoAs. Those can actually directly enter the TCA cycle, which again is still confined to the mitochondrial matrix. Okay, now that's the catabolic pathway for norvaline, um, this amino acid. Okay, but norvaline's function, at least the reason that you would generally take this pre-exercise or pre-resistance training, is because norvaline can actually increase the amount of nitric oxide that the body has available. Let's talk about why that is. Well, we have what here, this is called the urea cycle, okay? Now, this process of the urea cycle mainly does not happen in the skeletal muscle as much. This will actually happen more in the kidneys. Um, so, just understand that. But norvaline can be uptaken by a lot of different types of cells, including the cells that utilize the urea cycle. And what the urea cycle really is, is it's a, it's, a, it's a pathway that spans both the cytoplasm and the mitochondrial matrix, where it basically gets rid of excess nitrogen, okay? Excess nitrogen in the form of ammonia, and we excrete it as urea. Now, in this pathway, there's a reaction. It's called arginase. That's the enzyme that catalyzes it. And it converts L-arginine to L-ornithine. Now, ornithine is a non-proteinogenic amino acid, meaning we don't find it in proteins. We do find arginine in proteins, but remember, arginine has another function. Arginine can react with nitric oxide synthase, usually given as just NOS, which produces nitric oxide. So this arginine is going to be pulled in two different directions. Either the arginine can be uh, consumed by the urea cycle to produce L-ornithine, and that really doesn't seem like much, but that's necessary to produce urea, which is going to be a nitrogen waste product. Or the arginine can go this direction and, be, and produce nitric oxide via nitric oxide synthase. Okay, so the way that 
Norvaline increases the amount of nitric oxide is norvaline is actually believed to inhibit the enzyme arginase. Okay, norvaline may not look like it, but it can actually get in there in the active site and compete f with arginine. So arginine can't get in the active site while norvaline's there. So it inhibits this enzyme, which reduces the amount of activity going to the left here. In other words, it reduces the urea cycle activity, okay, because arginase can't convert arginine to ornithine. That conserves arginine. So we have more arginine available for nitric oxide production. So if we have less arginine being consumed by arginase, we have more available to be reacted with the nitric oxide synthase for nitric oxide production. And that's the rationale as to why you would actually take a norvaline supplement. It's less about the catabolism, even though it can be used to produce energy, which is actually another valuable use for it. But norvaline's major use as an ergogenic aid is by an inhibition of arginase, which preserves the amount of arginine, basically makes more arginine available for nitric oxide production. And nitric oxide, remember, is a potent vasodilator that will increase blood flow to skeletal muscle during exercise, okay? So this right here is really just a summary of two, nor two of norvaline's major functions in skeletal muscle. One of them is actually just gonna be for energy production. That's sort of the minor reason, at least for why you would supplement this. Um, but the major reason, which actually does not occur in skeletal muscle, it occurs in cells utilizing the urea cycle, it's going to be arginase inhibition for arginine conservation and nitric oxide production indirectly. All right, so again, hopefully this uh, gave you some good information on norvaline. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to discuss uh, HMB powder, which is another ergogenic aid, uh, that it actually has evidence uh, of being beneficial to take uh, before and after exercise. This is actually HMB beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate. And we'll talk about the functions of this HMB in the next video. Please join us there, but make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.